Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in this tutorial we're going to be talking about how you move seamlessly between Lightroom and Photoshop. We're going to be talking about taking one photo and editing that in Photoshop, as well as multiple photos, things like Photo Merge and Merged HDR Pro, as well as the export dialog when you're exporting multiple files at one time. So let's go ahead and get started. Now my goal is always to get the absolute best image I can in Lightroom. So I want to take it as far as I can in Lightroom. And then I'm going to head over to Photoshop in order to do my pixel based editing. Anything like adding crazy edges or combining multiple images. So let's take a look at the number of ways that we can do that. I think the easiest way to do that is simply to go under the photo menu, choose edit in, and then select Photoshop but you might notice that I have a few additional options that I've created. These are presets that you create by going under the Lightroom menu and then to Preferences. If you're on Windows, you'd go under the Edit menu and then Preferences. When you click on External Editing, these are the defaults that you'll get when you select Edit in Photoshop. If you want to change these, simply select what you would prefer from the list or enter in those values. In this case, I'll choose Photoshop Adobe RGB 16-bit at 300 pixels per inch as my default. But sometimes I want to open my images in 16-bit and sometimes I want to open my images in 8-bit. That's why I've gone ahead and set up these presets. And they're very, very easy to do. All you need to do is determine your additional external editor. So in this case, it's already loaded as Photoshop CS5, but if it wasn't, you could click the Choose button, navigate and find the application. Then select what file format. Let's use TIFF this time since I already have the other presets. We'll choose Adobe RGB as my color space. It's a little bit larger than, say, sRGB, but not quite as large as Profoto. I'll choose 8 bits for my bit depth, and then resolution 300. Since the image that I'm working on is really rather rough and grainy, I really don't need the 16-bit. And for the resolution, I'll leave it at 300. And then from the menu here, we'll just select Save Current Settings as New Preset. I'll go ahead and title it TIFF and Adobe RGB 8-bit and 300 pixels per inch. When I hit Create, it now appears on this list, and when I close out of my Preferences, when I go to the Photo menu and choose Edit In, we can see it appears right here. If you don't want to use the Photo menu, you can also Control click on the Mac or right mouse click on Windows, and then choose Edit In. In this case, let's go ahead and just simply say Edit in Photoshop CS5. This will use the default, which is perfectly acceptable for now. Now you can see I already had an edge file open, so let's go ahead and view both of these side by side. Now I'm going to select my Move tool, click on my edge file, and drag and drop it into my other image. I held down the Shift key when I did that so that it would perfectly align it. Then I no longer need my edge file, so we'll close that. And now if we look at my Layers panel, you can see that I have my edge layer and the background layer. What I'd like to do is get rid of all of this black so that I just see this kind of torn edge along the side. It's very easy to do that in Photoshop. All I need to do is go to my Layers panel, have the Layer 1 or the Edge layer targeted, and then change the Blend Mode to Screen. When I do that, you can see all the black disappears and I get this great kind of frayed or torn edge. All right, let's say that's all I want to do in Photoshop, so I'll do a quick File, Save, and then we'll close the file, and let's return back to Lightroom. You can see here that I have my original, my raw file in Lightroom, but it's also kept track of the image that I was editing in Photoshop. And if I double click to zoom into this loop view, you can see very clearly that this is the version with the edge on it. Excellent, so that's one great way to work with both Lightroom and Photoshop. Another great way when you're working with just a small number of images, like this time I'm going to use two images as opposed to the single image before, is to select Edit In and Open as Layers in Photoshop. 
The great thing about this feature is that if I have these multiple images that I want to composite together into the same file, instead of opening each one individually and then having to drag and drop it, I can tell Lightroom to do that for me, to open both of those files into a single document. And here we have that document in Photoshop. You can see on my Layers panel, I have the image of the dune and the image of the sky. Let's go ahead and reverse the order here so the dune is underneath the sky. Then I'll hide the sky layer for a moment, and then I'll select my Quick Selection tool, click and drag over the sky in order to select it. Now obviously, I want the sky to appear in that area. So what I'll do is, first I will add a layer mask. And there's several ways to do that, but I think the easiest is just to use the Masks panel, click on the Mask icon but that doesn't quite look right. They're out of proportion. So I would like to transform the sky, but I don't want to transform my mask. Not a problem. I'll click on the link icon between the layer thumbnail and the mask thumbnail, and then making sure that I click on the layer, because that's what I want to transform, I'll choose Edit, and then Transform, and Scale. In this case, I'm not going to scale it proportionally. I'm simply going to drag the bottom up until it has kind of the same vanishing point as the dunes do. That's why these images work well together. All right, I'll hit Enter or Return in order to apply that transformation. And let's go ahead and zoom in at least to 50% so that we can see that edge. It's looking pretty good but I might want to add just a slight blur to it. So I'll click on the mask icon in my layers panel and then add a feather here. See the great thing about adding a feather using the masks panel is that it's completely non-destructive. I can change my mind even after I save the file as far as how much of a feather I want on that edge. All right, let's zoom back in to fit in window and I'll go ahead and do a quick save to this image and then we can close it. And when I return back to Lightroom, you can see once again, Lightroom has kept track of that image that we've just created. It's also had added a dash edit after the file name. You can change that as well in the preferences if you want to by just selecting preferences and then coming down here and changing the template that's selected for your file renaming. Of course, I got there under the Lightroom menu on Macintosh, it'd be under the Edit menu, Preferences on Windows. All right, one small caution, I'll just let you know if you, if you do start in, in Lightroom and say Edit In and Edit in Photoshop, you'll notice that I've just been doing a save. If you simply save the file, then Lightroom will keep track of that file and automatically import it like we've seen. If you start doing a Save As from Photoshop, then Lightroom might actually lose track of that file, in which case it's not a huge deal. You would just need to re-import that file. So if you, if you remember to do a save as opposed to a save as, it might save you a step as far as re-importing. Okay, let's take a little bit different scenario now. Let's go ahead and select this entire range of images. And let's say instead of opening them all in Photoshop, we want to export them so that we can send them via email to a friend. Well, to do this, I'm going to go under the File menu and then select Export. Here again, we can create presets. And you'll notice that there are already some presets that we have available, or we can create our own. So let's go ahead and assume that we're going to send these via email, so therefore we want them to be JPEG files. Where do we want to save them? We can save them in the same folder, or we can save them anywhere we want. Let's go ahead and pick a specific folder. We will navigate to that folder. In this case, let's put them on the desktop. Click Choose. And then I can put them in a subfolder. So let's call this White Sands National Monument Export. And I might want to put JPEG, just as a little reminder. If I want to add them back into the catalog, I can, but in this case, there's really no need to. I probably don't want to rename the files because if I'm sending them to someone and they want to talk to me about a specific photo, it'd be helpful if the file names matched. So I won't rename them. As far as file settings go, we'll go ahead and select JPEG. 
we can pick our quality. Now, 100% here is going to give us the best quality, but also the largest file size. So we might want to bring that down just to around 90. That will probably take off about a third of the file size. And then, because I'm going to send these to my dad, he's going to look at them in Photoshop, I'll go ahead and choose Adobe RGB for my color space. Now, what about image size? I probably want to resize these, otherwise they're going to be really large files. So if you have images that you're sending where some are horizontal and some are vertical, the easiest thing to do is just select the long edge and put the dimension in for that. That way, if I say a thousand pixels here, that means that in a vertical image, the height will be a thousand pixels, and in a horizontal image, the width would be a thousand pixels. Really great that Lightroom figures that out for you. Okay, output sharpening. Let's go ahead and sharpen this for screen, because they're going to be viewing them on their computer. Metadata, let's leave that alone. We could put a watermark on top of our image, but again, since I know who I'm sending these to, it's really not necessary. And as for post-processing, here I could choose to open my files in Photoshop, look at them in the Finder, open them in a different application, or I can actually create actions in Photoshop and then take those actions, turn them into a droplet, and actually have Lightroom export a whole folder of images, launch Photoshop, run that batch processing for me. But that's the topic of a whole other movie. We don't have time for that now. So for now, I'll just choose to show in Finder. All right, we've set that all up. I don't want to ever have to do that again, so I'm going to click Add. I'm going to title this preset JPEG, a thousand pixels, Adobe, RGB. Anything else that I need? Maybe just that the quality is 90. So I'll put a little Q, 90. I can save this in my user presets or I can create any number of folders. For example, I'll save it in my JCOS folder. I'll click Create and then Export. Now the next time I want to export files using those same settings, I can simply choose File and then Export with Preset and select that preset from the list. While we're on the topic of exporting, if there's a specific site or a specific reason that you're exporting because you're using another service, what you might want to look at is underneath the file menu, Plugin Manager. Down at the bottom of Plugin Manager, there's a button for Plugin Exchange. If you click that, it will take you to the Exchange site on Adobe.com. Let's click where it says Export Plugins now we can scroll down and see a number of plugins that have been created by third parties in order to help you as you're exporting your files, whether you're putting them up on the web or hosting them to another service. All right, let's get back to Lightroom. I'll click Done. There are just two other things that I do want to mention. I'll switch collections, and that is the way that we hand off files to Photoshop. You can see here that I have an image that I have actually captured with four different exposures. If I wanted to hand this off because I wanted to make an HDR or a high dynamic range image, I could right mouse click or control click on Mac and then choose Edit In and Merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. Likewise, if I photographed a panorama image, I would scroll down select all of those images, and then right mouse or control click, and then choose Edit In and Merge to Panorama in Photoshop. Excellent! That wraps up this tutorial on moving between Lightroom and Photoshop. I think you can see that the two applications are seamlessly integrated so that you can hand files off and work with both applications to get the most out of your images.